swim bait time. So recently people have been asking if I can make a more in-depth video about my signature swim baits. So today in this video, I've got a huge batch of resin and a big order of baits to make. So we are gonna be making about 20 of these swim baits and I'm just gonna go through the whole process, start to finish, I'm making all of them. So starting off right into this, I'm just transferring over the resin into these smaller containers. It makes it easier to handle. And before I've asked this like a thousand times by everybody, I use Smoothcast 300. So far it's my favorite resin I've used, but I haven't really tried very many. And I'm just gonna whip out this little kitchen scale I've got. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zero it out with the cups and I'm gonna pour the appropriate kind of resin I need for my swim baits. Your swim baits will be different, of course, they won't be the same as mine. Before I mix the resins, I add the glass microsphere balloons just because I think it's easier. And then I mix the two resins together and I pour the molds. We're gonna demold these real quick. And now chances are, I kind of sped through this, so there's probably gonna be some bubbles in some of them. Yeah, see this piece, it had just like two little bubbles at the tip of this. What I typically do is just a little bit of super glue and baking soda and I can rebuild it, so that's not an issue. Here's the uh, head piece of the bait. This one always comes out the best, literally no bubbles. Yeah, see, yep. I, I sped through this too quick. Here's another bubble. But again, we, that's like not even bad at all. I could fill that in. Just a little super glue and baking soda, and that's not even a problem. So there's one bait poured. We got um 19 more to go. Actually, I just lied to you. The order called for 10 of these swim baits and 10 of these anglerfish swim baits, which are pretty much the exact same thing, just with a different head. I haven't showed these on the channel yet, but we have to make seven more of these, but we're for the Slayer Shads, we are done with those and we can move on to the next step of production to get them looking like this. Well, video continuity is ruined now because I'm wearing a gray sweatshirt, but I'm just cutting the sprues off the top of all the baits and just cleaning them up a little bit. And I just use a small knife to clean up a little bit of the sprue I couldn't get with the bandsaw. One, two, I'm not a huge fan of breathing in toxic lead fumes, so instead I use these small lead weights and I put about four in each hole and then I just use a tool and mush them down in there. After that, I just mix some part A and part B resin with a little bit of filler and then I fill in each of those holes. This seems to be like the best way to fill in pre-drill holes. Let's just take a second to admire my genius. Look how nice these all look lined up with this piece of wood. But anyways, we got these all filled in so we can just pop these off and sand these down and then we'll move on to the next step. I filled in all the air bubbles on these baits off screen basically because I figured I'm not gonna share all my industry secrets with you guys. Anyways, now that these things are done, I think we're going to start foiling the baits, duct tape. And after all my hard work, I've got it done. Except there's still six more to go. So I might've gotten carried away. And I might have foiled, black washed, and painted all of them. <laughs> so I just pulled like an all nighter, almost till four in the morning to get the Slayer Shots done for a bait show. And I uh, didn't get these baits done. I, I don't know. These baits, I'm trying to hustle them out, but these ones are angler fish basically. Same rubber tail and the same segments as the Slayer Shad, but with a different head, but it uses uh, the exact same lips. So we're just going to finish the rest of the video using these so I can show you guys how I paint them, how to go through the process. So this is right after foiling. You can see I have a big old foil mess over here where I take the aluminum duct foil, this stuff right here. Once the uh, foiling's done, I put black paint onto the bait to do like a black wash. And I'll use a wet rag to wipe that off and it just like gets into the foil makes extra details. I'll show you guys when I'm doing it. I'm working with limited camera space, so I only filmed painting this one bait, but this is just a pretty simple color scheme, it's just yellow with a little bit of orange red on top. After each bait pour, I have a little bit of excess resin, so I have a mold for these eyes I make, and then after I make the mold with the resin eyes, I paint them black, and then I take some glow-in-the-dark and put that on there as well. So here's just a real quick look of all the anglerfish colors I painted in. They come in kind of like a wide variety. And there's not real particular one way to do it, so I got a lot of different color schemes. One of the staples of these being anglerfish swim baits, each one has a little antenna on top. So I make them by twisting wire together and then dipping the ends in UV resin. And once that UV resin is cured, I dip them each in glow-in-the-dark paint. Tails. It's finally over. 
That took literally forever. Well, I kind of had to sacrifice the video in order to get the baits done on time, but they got where they were supposed to be by the deadline, so we are good on that. They turned out great, they looked awesome. If there's any parts of the process I left out of the video, we'll just chalk it up to industry secrets, and we'll just go on from there. All right, video's over.